We're first going to begin with the seatbelt. The seatbelt is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is not frayed, ripped, or damaged. And it latches securely. The seat cushion is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is in good condition. It is not ripped or damaged. The seat is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is in good condition and there are no missing bolts. My windows, whenever you inspect, you must point at everything that you're going to inspect. So we're going to start in pointing now. My windows is clean, clear, not cracked, broken, or damaged, and there is no illegal stickers. My side mirrors is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is clean. It is not cracked, broken, or damaged. There is no illegal stickers, and it is adjusted to my viewing. My windshield is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is clean. It is not cracked, broken, or damaged, and there is no illegal stickers. My rear view mirror is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is clean. It is not cracked, broken, or damaged, and there is no illegal stickers. My sun visor is present, and it is not missing. My steering wheel has no more than 20-inch play. My electric horn works properly. I can hear it. My gas pedal. You want to press the gas pedal three times. My gas pedal moves freely and it doesn't get stuck. My brake pedal moves freely and it doesn't get stuck. My driver area is clean. And there are no objects in the way. My registration, my insurance, and my inspection sticker is present and is all up to date. My fire extinguisher is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is fully charged and is locked with the lock pin. If an inspector were to ask you, how would I know if it's fully charged? You would say that the needle is on the green. My seat belt cutter is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is not missing. My red reflected triangles are located in the trunk. And we will inspect that while we do the outside cabinet inspection. In regards of the first aid kit. The flares and the fuses are supposed to be in the vehicle, but unfortunately it is not present at this time. Now I'm going to begin a safe start. I am going to expect my ABS sensor, my battery sensor, and my oil pressure sensor. It will appear shortly and then disappear Letting me know that they are all working properly. Now, when you put the key in, you don't turn on the engine. You only put in the key in to turn on the battery. So the electricity could come on on the dashboard. You put the key in and you only turn slightly. And you point. My ABS, my battery, and my oil pressure sensor has appeared and disappeared. Letting me know that it is all working properly. Then we turn on the vehicle. Now, as I was pointing here, now you have to deal with these, which are the gauges. So we're going to start at the right. This is my speedometer gauge, which helps me to understand how fast the vehicle is moving. And right now the needle is on zero because the vehicle is not moving. This here is my fuel gauge which helps me understand how much fuel is in the vehicle. And right now the needle is on the F, letting me know that there is a full tank of gas. This is my RPM gauge, 
revolution per minute. That's all you have to say for that gauge. This gauge, this is my temperature gauge, which helps me to understand how much temperature is in the engine. And right now the needle is on a quarter, letting me know that it's near at normal temperature range. Now we're going to deal with the indicator lights. So we're gonna deal with the indicator lever here and we're gonna pull up. My right indicator light is working properly. My left indicator light is working properly. You click your four ways. My four way indicator lights are working properly. And my high beam, you push the, the indicator lever in. My high beam are working properly. After you done dealing with the dashboard, you wanna deal with the right side of the vehicle. You start first at the gear shifter. You press your foot on the brake and you move the gear shifter, but we must also always have the emergency brake on at all times while we end this inspection. So now we're going to put our gear shifter down to drive and we bring it back in park. My gear shifter moves freely and it does not get stuck. Now we're gonna be dealing with the AC. We're gonna start first at the AC and we're gonna bring it into cold first. Okay, as you bring it into cold, you wanna put your hands on the vents so that you can feel the air. My air conditioner is working properly. I can feel the air pushing through the vents. Then you go to the heat, turn it to the heater, and again, push your hand on the vents. My heater is working properly. I can feel the heat coming out through the vents. Now you wanna check for your defroster. You press this button here for your defroster, and you push your hands over the dashboard to feel the heat coming out the dash. My defroster is also working properly. I can feel the heat coming through the vents. While you're here, you wanna mention the dashboard so that you don't forget it because your hands is over the vents. My dashboard is clean with no objects in the way. Now you shut it off. Now, after you finish with the right side, you wanna to work towards the left side and you deal with the indicated level lever. So you press this button right here for your windshield wiper fluid and it will also activate the windshield wipers. So I wanna press this lever here and the windshield wiper fluid comes on. My windshield wiper fluid works properly. My windshield wipers are also working properly. The windshield wiper arm is properly mounted. It is in good condition. It is not broken. It is not damaged. The wiper rubber, which is attached to the wiper arm, it is in good condition. It is not ripped. It is not dry. It is not damaged. And it gives proper tension to the windshield. Now you're going to inspect your interior lights. Your interior dome lights will turn on by this lever, this knob. You bring it up and you can see the lights as they turn on. You see the lights in the back? They turn on. So I turn it off and I turn it on with the lever, with the little knob. And you say to the inspector, my interior lights are working properly. The lights turn on and off as I deal with the knob. Once you are done with this part, you move exactly to the door. As your hand is close to here, you move to the door handle here to inspect the driver door. My driver door opens and closes properly from the inside. Once you are done with that, you are going to check for your three brake checks. You're first going to begin with your emergency brake. Your emergency brake should be already pressed all the way down. It's already set for you at the beginning. So what you're going to do, you're going to put your foot on the brake, you're gonna put it on drive. Take your foot off the brake and just slightly press the gas pedal, slightly. Put it back on brake and you tell the instructor, my emergency brake 
is working properly, my vehicle did not move. The second brake check would be the hydraulic brake pressure. You're going to tell the inspector this. I'm going to check for my hydraulic brake pressure. I will attempt to brake to press on the brake pedal three times. But on the third press, I'm going to hold down on the brake pedal for five seconds. My brake pedal should not hit the floor. If it does hit the floor, it lets me know that I have bad hydraulic brake pressure. And you press the brake pedal three times. One, two, three, and you hold it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. My brake pedal did not go down to the floor, which helps me to understand that I have good hydraulic brake pressure. Now you're going to check for your service brake. You're going to release the parking brake now. And you're going to allow the vehicle to go up just slightly, very little. But as it does it, you're going to press the service brake hard to let the inspector know that your service brakes is working properly. But before we attempt, you also have to mention that the speedometer gauge will also work as you're moving forward because the needle is going to move while the vehicle is in motion. So we're going to do this now. Put your foot on the brake, put the gear shifter in drive and let the vehicle go slightly forward. Once you do that, you put it on park, you secure the vehicle and you say my service brake is working properly and in regards of me moving the vehicle my speedometer needle has shifted moving letting me know that my speedometer gauge is working properly now you want to inspect the interior the rear inside of the vehicle one thing I forgot to mention which should always be a priority you never leave with the key in the vehicle as you leave out the vehicle. When you open the door to check the door, your foot should never hit the ground. If you have put your foot in the ground, you automatically fail. So now I'm going to unlock my seatbelt. I'm going to take the key with me and we're going to check inside the vehicle. And as I began to start with the seat belt on this seat, I would do the same for these seats and the rest of the seats in the vehicle. My seat belt is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is not ripped, it is not frayed, it is not damaged, and it latches securely. My seat cushion is properly mounted to the seat. It is in good condition. It is not ripped and it is not damaged. My seat is properly mounted to the vehicle. It is in good condition and there are no missing bolts. Once I'm done with this seat, I'm supposed to say what I do with this seat, I would do for all the rest of the seats inside the vehicle. Then you attempt to do the aisle. The aisle is clean. It is clear. There are no holes and there are no objects that are in the way. Once you do that, then you're able to go outside and perform the out cab inspection. As we're also doing the outside, we have to also mention the reflected triangles, which we mentioned inside. So what you want to do is you want to open the vehicle. My red reflected triangles is properly mounted to the vehicle and it is present. Now you perform your out cab inspection.